All right. Welcome, everybody, to our very first East Coast DBT Meetup Group event, where we'll be going over what we learned at Coalesce 2022. So just a few of the highlights. Um, you can see some of the things that we're going to talk about here that we learned. So one of the best things I think is um, our team works remotely. So being able to uh, see everyone in person and getting back to those in-person events was a major highlight for, for our team personally. Um, what do you think, Mike? <laughs> Yeah, I completely agree. I think there's just a, an additional level of energy at the the conference from in person. I mean, there's the natural energy when it comes to DBT as a whole, uh, just with excitement behind the the product and the mission. Uh, but just having the in person conference, especially in New Orleans, uh, made it extra extra fun and energizing, uh, along with furthering bonds and relationships with coworkers and, and other friends I hadn't seen in a while, and of course, meeting new people. Absolutely. I, I think New Orleans was uh, a cool place. It was definitely a, a cool place to visit being my first time there. I highly recommend everyone goes there at least once in their life. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So really one of the, not one of, I think the main highlight from an announcement perspective, which you think for any software vendor is going to announce at their annual conference is the semantic layer. And Really think of this as version 1.0. This isn't the end all be all of, of what DBT uh, vision for the semantic layer is, but it really is instead of defining what is revenue, what's a customer, what are some of these key metrics traditionally are defined within an analytic tool or whatever the consumption tool ends up being of the data that is in your cloud data warehouse, such as Snowflake or BigQuery. You can define this once and use many times. And you know, it's all done from a traditional DBT perspective uh, within uh, the code itself. Uh, you can see how revenue is, is defined. Of course, the DAG also gets involved with showing what these metric definitions are from a visualization perspective. You define the grain um, and some of the other dimensions that are associated to that particular metric. So a lot of excitement here. Uh, there are some nuances to it. So we did talk about the, the visualization, how you see the, the DAG today, uh, traditionally of the dependencies, um, and just that lineage. Well, you have a similar DAG view of, of the semantic layer as well, where things are highlighted in, in pink and more easily call out uh, and define what these look like. So you think of our, your analytic tool would just then just be pulling in and referencing revenue or pulling in expenses. and you know, you could have multiple analytic tools for a lot of organizations trying to have consistency and standards as well. That's a, a good going in position. It's really hard to enforce and control over time. Uh, so this is one of those ways to, to really drive that consistency into your data layer instead of the analytic layer. So some of those nuances uh, referring to is that right now, this semantic layer is in public preview within dbt cloud only within north america now once this public preview ends which I'm not sure is that a q1 or q2 of next year semantic layer will be an additional license uh, subscription fee available only at in the team and enterprise plans uh, of dbt and if you log in today your traditional uh, cloud uh, access to DBT, you can see the semantic layer and no indication as to what will the cost be for the semantic layer or if that will cost will be immediately within team and enterprise plans uh, once public preview ends and this becomes GA or generally available. So the another big release is or announcement was the the change of DBT Cloud's IDE. Um, there's now a comparison uh, capability that you're able to see between models. All right, what's changed? And so that way you can quickly see, especially if you have multiple developers and a lot of times developers, you know, we end up working on things that uh, you aren't the sole person that's working on that particular model. Now you're able to more easily call out those, those deltas and those differences. So nice handy feature. Uh, versus trying to go back into into GitHub and figure out, well, what's really changed? What's the, the delta? 
you can now do that through the, the visualization. You can just see you know, if you've been into DBT uh, lately here, you'll you'll just see the, this the new look and feel. This is a you know the look and feel. There's a lot more engineering that went on behind the scenes relative to oh, it looks like they just changed some colors and moved things around. There actually was a lot of engineering that went in to improve the performance of, of the IDE. They're not done. DBT is not done by any means of improving the performance. But for those of you that have been using uh, DBT for a while, there definitely were at times a lot of wait time as you're sitting around waiting to you know, open up a model, run a model, and kind of drives you batty uh, at times here. So a lot of those performance improvements have, have helped, uh, but there's gonna be a lot more to come. Uh, DBT Labs is very, open and honest of saying, boy, we, this is great. We just have some growing pains of the number of, of people that are, are using the product um, and just some of the technology that they originally started out with, they're retrofitting it and making better uh, as time goes on. So look for more things to come on the IDE. So when you think of Python, you hear if you're a big fan of uh, Snowflake or even BigQuery, out of conversation around Python. And here's all the capabilities, running Python within Snowflake, running Python within BigQuery, running Python within, you, know, you name it. Well, now DBT is also in that bandwagon where you are now able to really reference and run Python from within DBT itself. So giving you additional processing capabilities, tapping into more libraries uh, that are open sourced. And you know, again, this is you know, early version 1.0 release from DBT. So look for more and more support to come from, uh, from Python in the, in the coming months here. All right, then the DBT certification has been around for a bit within 2022 here. However, DBT went into a bit of a deeper dive as to like, why are why is DBT pushing for certification? Well, there's as you can imagine with the popularity of DBT as a whole, there's a lot of people out there that are saying, "Well, yes, I I know DBT," and the reality is is that's not always the case. And trying to raise everybody's uh, skill sets and really for DBT labs to be able to to help validate that yes, this person does actually know what they're doing. They created a certification program. Uh, a single test uh, that you take. And this is a very challenging uh, exam. If you haven't taken the, the exam, just a fair warning, you actually have to know how DVT works and, and quite well, uh, <laughs> the level of depth. It's not a surface understanding of, of DVT. Uh, they did announce that there are approximately 350 people that have already become certified within 2022. That was at the time of the conference. Wouldn't be surprised if you see that number over you know, 450, 500 by the end of the calendar year uh, across the, the globe. For those of you that have passed the exam, congratulations. You know, this is definitely a legitimate uh, certification. And DBT, while the exam is hard, DBT really wants you to know the fundamentals. This isn't a answer a lot of trick question uh, type of certification. These are real world scenarios that if you've done a number of DBT projects, you will have uh, the appropriate level of understanding to some of the, the nuances within the tool and when you use certain features. DBT has also uh, released some training as well. And so this training is self-paced available on their, their website. It is free. Uh, training that you can go through and really prepare yourself uh, from a hands-on perspective uh, for the exam. And if you are the type of person that likes to go look for for brain dumps of, of exams, and I'm just going to go and study the brain dump and pass the exam that way, because it's such a new certification, there are not uh, the brain dumps out there that you can go do that. So those folks that have passed it, congratulations. Uh, for those that you will be taking the exam, you know, definitely we, we have a lot of suggestions and tips and tricks. So feel free to reach out to us if you're interested in learning more uh, about those. Yeah, so uh, DBT Coalesce 2022 was, was really unlike any other conference in the fact that you're not just going to booths and getting pamphlets and a quick demo. They really put a lot into this. Um, all of the, the sponsors there 
took part in experiential marketing where they really provided like a full on fun time. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it than that, but like you can see on the slide here, um, Atlan had like a carnival theme. They even had a snow cone machine and uh, continual had the makeup lady. She was doing everybody, and I mean everybody's makeup, uh, so that they could kind of go around uh, to all the different events and the after parties and looking kind of crazy and in true New Orleans spirit. And then um, another sponsor, Light Dash, had this cool make your own tie dye setup. And I mean, there's really just too many to name because they were awesome, but we're hoping to have a booth next year. And I don't know how in the world we're going to top that. They, everyone there just did a, a really good job at keeping people engaged in the conversation and also providing them with a fun experience. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head there, Heather, because at first, going to the conference and just trying to envision what is ex experiential marketing and what's this going to be? Is this a gimmick or, or not? And at the end of the day, the word engagement that you used is so true that when you do have this level of, of marketing, where it's not just walk up to the booth, scan your badge, have a minute conversation, get your koozie or tchotchke and away you go. Because you're there, you're engaged, you're hanging out in these booths for, you know, it could be five minutes, could be 10 minutes, could be 20 minutes. And while you might be getting your makeup done, you know, there could be additional conversations that you're having and people just want to get to know you. This isn't hard selling and you're getting trapped in the corner and being pressured to buy a timeshare or anything along those lines. But it really is a truly engaging way to, to interact with some of the vendors that you might not have gotten to know, or maybe think of it differently. We really get disarmed and just, you just have a, a natural flowing conversation that maybe it goes somewhere, maybe it doesn't. And, and that's okay. So it's good for the attendees and good for the vendors as well. Uh, and, and really a, of a non pressure or non salesy environment. Yeah, definitely. Great swag too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> also the events they had after parties um, pretty much every night. I think we went to a few of them together and, and then uh, they had this kind of, major ending event, uh, end party, I guess you could say, uh, there's probably a better word for it, but yeah, they, they went all out. They rented out the, um, Mardi Gras world and you could go through, see the floats. And then they had another venue behind that where they had a incredible food spread. Um, they had a live piano band that was taking, uh, requests and they were playing like any any song you could think of they could play it it was awesome and i actually got to meet tristan as you can see i'm pretty proud of that you want to say who tristan is just in case folks don't know yeah just in case uh he is the founder of dbt and fishtown analytics which became dbt um mike probably could give a little bit of a better background there uh it's a little before my my day to days yeah, so Fishtown Analytics is the name of the consulting company that originally created the product of, of DBT, and the product uh, quickly took off, and they realized, wow, Fishtown Analytics and DBT is horribly confusing, so let's just align on DBT Labs as the company name, and then DBT uh, as the product, so Tristan is one of three or four uh, founders, but he is the, the CEO and the main kind of focal point of, of the organization from an you know, outside looking in. Uh, perspective, but it also goes to show a very accessible individual, very accessible people within the organization as a whole. Uh, the you know, number of attendees was around 5,000 at the particular conference, and you know, for other vendors that are in the tens of thousands or even over 100,000, you're not going to get an opportunity to even probably see the CEO. Um, or you would be from afar, and they'd have their circle of of handlers that wouldn't let you. You'll get to him, but Heather was able to easily walk up to Tristan, super approachable individual, and was more mm -hmm. than happy to to get a picture and uh, spend some time uh, talking. You know, he had no shortage of people that were looking for for his time, but everyone was very respectful to just keep it keep it short and, and very yeah. nice. So yeah, we saw him around at all the events. He he was really um, 
approachable. Well, when he wasn't <laughs> talking to a bunch of people, he was approachable, but he, he was easy to talk to, nice guy, and you can't usually do that kind of thing. Uh, just walk up to a CEO of a growing company like DBT and and do that. So that was pretty awesome. Oh, another cool thing at at the um, farewell party, I guess is a better word for it. Uh, they had a Cafe du Monde food truck with beignets. And that was one of my favorite things about New Orleans. Yeah, so uh, DBT has a huge community and it's growing by the second, I would say. <laughs> You can join their community on Slack, Discourse, GitHub, and they have tons of events out there. Uh, I'm going to put this link out here for you guys. If anybody's interested in joining the community, you can get more information here. So they they did offer super early bird tickets, but unfortunately, they are no longer offering them at this awesome deal. They were 70% off, but they have gone up since then but they are still well worth it. Um, if you go and purchase tickets next year, they're going to be in San Diego, um, as you can see on the slide here, from October 16th through 20th. And that's another place I haven't been yet. So I'm excited to check that off my list. And uh, we are actually running a little campaign with our own swag. Uh, the first 100 people to join and participate in our Slack community can get their choice of these three awesome socks. And socks were kind of a huge deal at this conference as well. Um, everybody had socks. And so we decided we want to beat somebody. We got to get some socks. <laughs> yeah, when it comes to the, the overall modern data stack, this started a couple of years ago, maybe a handful of years ago uh, at, at some of the, the early days of, of Looker, uh, Snowflake and and Fivetran, giving out socks was the the new thing. Instead of you know some, some tchotchkes at a booth that people wouldn't use, or maybe they give them to their kids and the kids end up breaking them or lose them uh, very quickly as soon as they got home. Socks are something that you know from a stickiness perspective and just you know utility perspective are are much <laughs> much nicer. So these are are good quality socks. You know if you want. You know, one pair or more than one pair, just let us know and be happy to get them to you. And if you think your kids aren't going to take over your socks, they will, because mine have. <laughs> <laughs> I probably only have one pair from all of those to myself now. They, for whatever reason, they love them. Yeah. If I tried to wrap them up for Christmas, I bet they wouldn't like them so much. I uh, put the link in there for anybody who's interested in joining the Data Lake House community. You can go check us out and read a little bit about us and you can click the link on the page to join. And we kind of just talk about all things data and analytics and um, try to keep the conversation flowing. So one question that I see that came through is uh, how do I how do I get to go for free next year? Like, Well, that's a very good question. You have two options. Um, Coalesce is online, uh, which online is free. You get the video, live video streaming, or you get a recorded version that you can uh, view at your own discretion. But then also, if you actually want to go to San Diego and be present for the entire week and go for free, one of the ways that you can do that is by being a presenter. And naturally, conferences would rather have customers that use their product do the presenting that carries a lot more weight than say a partner uh, such as ourselves. And so if you're interested in, in going down that route, you feel free to reach out to us. We can put you in touch with the appropriate people. Uh, we'll be there and actually we'll, we'll have a session or two that we'll be presenting at. And we're always happy to co-present. I know some people don't love the idea of being up on a stage for 30 or 45 minutes in front of a room full of people talking about yourself or feeling like you're talking about your yourself. We're happy to share that that duty uh, with you. And as part of that, you know, you get a free conference badge. That's just something that DBT does. And you know, there's other other ways to help offset to reduce your your spend while we're there. And, and happy to talk with you about what that uh, could look like or what that might mean uh, to do that. So, if you're willing to get creative. DBT, and we are also willing to get creative to, to make it as cheap or as close to free as possible. We've got some more upcoming events. Um, 
for people watching this video on YouTube, we have another Coalesce recap on the 7th uh, at 3 o'clock Eastern. We've also got in our uh, Carolina Snowflake group, we have a View Security and Snowflake event this month on the 19th. And then next month in January, we'll be going over Apache Iceberg and Snowflake. And if you didn't make it to Coalesce, the videos are all available. I'm going to go ahead and share that link also in case you want to check out some of those awesome sessions. And if you did go, we'd love to hear what you thought. And um, if you need any more insights, we can do a one-on-one -on -one recap. If you just connect with us and reach out, we'd be happy to share with you what we learned. Thank you all for joining our very first East Coast DBT Meetup Group event, and there will be many more to come. We're hoping to uh, get back to in-person events very soon, and um, right now we are part of uh, the Modern Data Professionals uh, Network on Meetup. So we have a couple groups on there, three to be exact, and we are continuing to grow and uh, check us out and see if there's something near you in the future. And we, we hope to see you at all of our events, virtual or otherwise. Thank you all so much. Thanks, everybody.